everyone. It's really good to be giving another webinar in our Connecting with Nile Soundbites webinar series. Uh, so today I'm going to be talking about smartphone connected hearing aids and this is one of a number of um, webinars that we're going to be uh, giving on uh, remote technologies over the next uh, couple of weeks. So smartphone uh, smartphone connected hearing aids and power hearing aid users and the message uh, from today's is that the take home message is that it's not the technology but what people do with the technology so there are a number of uh, benefits to m health so m health is when healthcare is delivered through mobile technologies such as smartphones and tablets and there are a number of benefits which are shown here First of all, um, M Health um, increases access to um, healthcare, so this overcomes barriers of geography, time, and mobility. Um, easy access and convenience can lead to greater empowerment. Um, a more personalised and tailored approach to healthcare um, um, approach and moves away from the more traditional one size fits all and can lead to more uh, personalised um, healthcare. Um, by being able to interact more with the um, uh, the um, mobile technologies, people are better able to engage not only with their healthcare but also their their um, healthcare condition. Um, by being able to um, self-evaluate and self-monitor how people are getting on, they're better able to self-manage their health condition. And by having greater um, control over um, how to um, manage um, their hearing health care, this can lead to a greater participation in everyday life. Uh, one of the uh, big advantages of, of mobile um, health and mobile technologies is the ability to be able to collect a lot of data. So by um, um, methods such as ecological momentary assessment, we're able to gather um, large amounts of data that can be analysed using new and novel methodologies such as AI and machine learning. And finally, um, there's often limited healthcare, so being able to have high volume um, healthcare at low cost can lead to new service delivery models. So um, there are a number of different types of uh, mobile technology for connected hearing healthcare and for self-management shown here. And we're going to be talking about all these different um, aspects in our webinar series. Uh, today, I'm going to be talking about smartphone connected hearing aids, as I said. So this is the patient pathway that we're very familiar with and the, uh, the um, smartphone connected hearing aids really come in at the intervention part of the pathway, but also um, in terms of um, ongoing support by the way that um, smartphone connected hearing aids um, are able to support people beyond the clinic appointment. So a Cochrane review that I um, published a couple of years ago has shown that hearing aids are effective. So um, the review showed that for hearing related quality of life and listening ability, there were large beneficial effects. And this was moderate quality um, evidence, which is actually really very high for a systematic review. For health related quality of life, and um, for the first time we were able to go and show that there was um, a small, although uh, albeit um, significant beneficial effect in health related quality of life. And again, this was um, um, this used moderate uh, quality um, evidence. So the conclusion of the uh, Cochrane review was that the evidence is compatible with the widespread provision of hearing aids, the first line clinical management in those seeking help for hearing difficulties. So hearing aids um, are affected effective but we know that hearing aids get bad press so why is this well traditionally hearing aids have had a, have really bad press in terms of way uh, the way they look in terms of being a bit big bulky plasticky with custom ear moles and really um, not very attractive and this has caused um, people get really uh, quite bothered about the sort of cosmetic um, um, appearances of hearing aids even though hearing aids um, are effective and, and can really help um, improve people's quality of life, there are still occasions when people will have difficulties being able to hear. So, for example, in difficult listening situations, such as having a conversation as a group, so you can see uh, this group of people in a restaurant here, and particularly when there is uh, background noise. Um, one of the um, issues around hearing loss, if hearing aids aren't, aren't helping so much, is that people often feel quite isolated. And they can be isolated either in a situation where there's lots of people around themselves, like in this one here, but where they withdraw from themselves because they're unable to uh, communicate or participate well, 
participate well, or they may even become isolated where they don't even attend social or other types of um, functions or meetings or activities. And then finally, um, it's been well known for many, many years that there's a stigma um, attached um, with hearing aids, really sort of encapsulating a lot of uh, what I've been talking about so far. So a couple of years ago, um, we asked the question, can new technologies help overcome some of these issues? So um, over the last few years, we've seen um, a real explosion in the use of smartphone connectivity. Um, I've got three examples of how that might be used here in terms of self-fitting, hearing aids, um, you being able to adjust the sound uh, quality of the um, hearing aids and then being able to um, adjust hearing aids remotely. So where the, uh, the audiologist is in the clinic and the patient is at home. And today I'm going to be focusing on um, this, the user adjustment aspects of um, smartphone connectivity. So we carried out a study uh, a couple of years ago um, in Nottingham in the UK and the research question um, we asked was, does the functionality of a smartphone app provide benefits in everyday life? So the two main aims, uh, the first um, was to assess the benefits of the smartphone app. And the second was to explore people's uh, usability, how did they use them and what were their preferences of the app? So this is um, um, a screen um, shot of what the apps look like and the app was used with Phonax Audio B90 uh, direct hearing aids, um, which were programmed using the Phonax digital um, adaptive algorithm. So a number of programs that were, that were available, there were some sound modifiers. So this enabled um, people to be able to adjust the volume, the gain, um, to be able to reduce noise, um, set microphone directionality and adjust compression. So a bunch of different types of sound modifiers to adjust. There were some preset um, programs that had been set um, 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 at, at the outset, so factory presets. So these were um, pro uh, programs that had been shown, shown previously to be helpful, either watching television, or watching television, um, listening in a restaurant or listening to music. And there's also the option for people to be able to customise and the sound and then be able to save those custom programs store them, give them a name and then use them uh, whenever they wanted to. So the study um, involved 44 hearing aid users. Uh, the um, hearing aid users were recruited from a clinic in the UK's National Health Service. Um, there were there was some eligibility criteria. It was really important that uh, people had an Apple iPhone because um, the uh, program was the app wasn't available on Android. So they had to have an um, um, an, an iPhone that was um, um, at least iOS ten or above. And one of the criteria was that people use the um, the phone um, more than just sending uh, texts. So we did um, a single centre perspective observational study, which I'll say more about in a minute. And we used a mixed methodology, which we're using more and more in our hearing research studies. So we used a mixture of both quantitative and qualitative methodologies, including um, two focus groups. So this is the uh, study design. Um, it was a seven week study. So a baseline, uh, people came into the clinic. They were fitted with the new hearing aid, the Phonak hearing aid. We collected some uh, patient reported outcome measures and carried out an interview. Patients came back uh, at one week later where um, the hearing aid was fine tuned and we checked that they were getting on okay with the um, hearing aids and again we repeated some patient reported outcome measures and carried out a speech and noise test. The participants were then um, left for six weeks, told to go home, use the hearing aids um, as they would normally. Uh, the home trial um, included some hearing tasks that we asked them to do and we also got them to make a note of their different experiences. So after the six weeks tr six week trial, uh, they came back at week seven and we, we, we repeated the outcome measures in the speech and noise um, speech and noise test and had a final interview. Um, and then some people were um, randomly um, selected to take part in focus groups so we could get a bit of a more of a handle on you know what they uh, what their experiences were. So down here are the characteristics of the participants. Um, very typical of NHS clinic patients. Um, two thirds of the patients were um, existing hearing aid users. Um, they were all, they were all just under the age of seventy. So um, this is very typical of what we would see 
um, in the Nottingham Clinic, um, as were the uh, pure tone audiograms. So in terms of the results, um, so uh, first of all, just looking at the hearing aid users and looking at, at um, hearing aid outcomes, we saw across the board that hearing aid um, outcomes improved and most of the outcomes improved with large clinical effect sizes. So for the um, existing hearing aid users, I've shown here the results in the Glasgow hearing aid difference profile and the um, device orientated subjective outcome um, questionnaire, the DOZO. So for the um, for the Glasgow difference profile, this people had to go and say how much more benefit or satisfaction their new hearing aid gave them compared to their previous ones. And 100% meant that they were um, uh, this was a 100% improvement of benefit and satisfaction. So everybody reported that the new hearing aids uh, gave them more benefit and, um, benefit and, and satisfaction. For the dozo, there's six different um, scales. Um, so these would include things like listening in noise, listening in quiet, convenience. And I'm showing you the results here for listening effort. So this is the uh, listening effort. Um, a rating that people reported with their previous hearing aids, a baseline. And we can see that there's a significant improvement um, six weeks later with the uh, new hearing aids. There's a highly significant um, difference uh, between uh, the previous and the study hearing aid. But we're particularly interested in the size of that um, effect. And um, the, the D here is Cohen's D effect size. And we can see down here, Anything that greater than is it greater than 0 0.8 is um, a large effect size. Um, for um, both the new and existing hearing aid users, I've got the results here of uh, participation restrictions and fatigue. So uh, for participation restrictions, we use the HAIE, the Hearing Handicap Infantry for the uh, for the elderly. And you can see for the new hearing aid users, unaided, there was significant um, um, participation restrictions reported, and these reduced um, uh, enormously. Um, highly significant a reduction and a, and a very large effect size. For the existing hearing aid users with their previous hearing aid, um, there was um, less of um, um, an, an improvement, um, but this was still highly significant and it was still a large effect size. In terms of fatigue, we use the Vanderbilt uh, fatigue scale, which is a relatively new outcome measure. And we see similar results. So unaided, um, our new hearing aid users reporting a lot of fatigue, which um, was um, much reduced uh, seven weeks later um, after using uh, the hearing aid. And again, similar to the participation restrictions, we're seeing that uh, for existing hearing aid users, there was a reduction in reported fatigue, which was still significant and um, highly significant and still had a large um, effect size. So um, we took quite a bit of feedback from patients about what they thought of the app and, and the, the hearing aids. The app was rated highly, it was rated four stars out of five. And um, to summarize some of the patient feedback, we saw that um, for about two thirds of the participants, the app met their needs extremely well. Um, the best feature um, reported was the ability of participants to be able to adjust um, their hearing aids using the app. Um, this was by far the most important uh, measure and really um, helped people to improve their listening um, abilities in lots of different conditions. And you can see here that people um, also reported that the best feature was being able to use their, their hearing aids in, in different um, listening environments. The, where the app was reported to be most useful was having a conversation noise with about half of the people reporting that and about a third of the re people reporting that the app was most useful in watching television. We asked did people experience tiredness and about 80%, 87% said no. Um, so this, re um, this supported some of the results that we had um, from the fatigue questionnaire. So we carried out um, a couple of focus groups. Um, they took about um, an hour. Um, to run and then we transcribed the interviews and we analysed the um, results using a deductive um, a thematic analysis based on the COMB model of how behaviour change. So for, for those who are not familiar with the COMB, there are three, uh, three different components which impact on behaviour, capability um, and opportunity, both impact on motivation and the three um, impact on the uh, behaviour and behaviour itself. The target behaviour can impact on both on uh, 
capability, motivation and opportunity. So I'm going to go talk through some of the themes from um, the uh, focus groups. First off, um, capability, so looking at knowledge and skills. And we see by far that the uh, the, the sort of the biggest um, theme, the most important thing that came through was around um, people's ability to be able to adjust um, their hearing aids using the app. This led to better um, or increased participation and people felt more confident. So this ties um, in with the feedback that we had previously. One of the things that um, came through was this idea of experiential learning. So the more people use the app, um, the more they were able to learn how to use it best and the more confident that they became. So typically people use the app a lot more in the beginning and then as they got more used to it and so the programs, it, the, the use of this tailored off. But this idea that people learned what to do um, came through quite strongly. In terms of complexity of controls, some people thought there were too many controls, too many things to do. Other people's re people really liked it. This led to um, the complexity controls led to something called decisional burden, where people spend quite a bit of time in the beginning working out um, what to do. And, and this, this is something that was supported that could be improved upon. In terms of opportunity, uh, the listening context was um, a, a theme that came through, and this is where people tended to use the app in situations which were much more challenging, where they thought it could make a real difference. Uh, people reported that there was less stigma, um, the fact that they had smartphones, they could show people exactly what they were doing, they could see how it could affect their hearing. People felt much more confident about being open and upfront about having um, their hearing aids. There was an aspect around societal smartphone norms, so some people felt a bit awkward about using a smartphone in situations such as at work or if they were out at the pub, for example, um, feeling that, you know, they were seen to be fiddling with their phone and they felt a bit uncomfortable about that. In terms of motivation, empowerment was um, came through as um, you know, a, a, a really strong theme from a number of different aspects. And there's some um, quotes here. It's great. It gives you control. It's not other people running my life. It's me. And another quote was, in a restaurant, it meant I didn't have to sit with my back to the wall anymore. I could sit where I wanted. So there was a strong theme of, of, of empowerment. And this led to having um, increased confidence and also reports that it benefited other family members and friends. So this idea of self-tuning, being able to facilitate feelings of empowerment, where people felt more in control, which meant that they led to increased confidence and participation. And it, it came through that it, it was really the ability of people to be able to have the um, power, the ability to self-tune the hearing aids that was really important rather than the technology per se. So one of the things that um, we'll hear about in future webinars and both Brent and I spoke about in the last um, couple of webinars is this, the, the slow uptake of mobile technology and, and health and other teleaudiology um, applications into clinical practice. So I've run a number of studies looking at remote technologies and this comes up every time, this idea of age and the digital divide. So from the patient point of view, and it's commonly cited um, in our hearing studies, other people's hearing studies, and in studies that are not specific to hearing, there's this sort of unfound belief that people, older people think their ability to use technology is much, much poorer um, relative to others, um, for example, younger people. And we see this not only with patients, but we also see it with the audiologists. So, um, you know, it's been reported that um, some audiologists will only recommend smartphone connected hearing aids after they have made a judgment of what they think their appraisal of their patient's technology competence is. And quite often um, audiologists will rule out um, people as not meeting the criteria for smartphone hearing aids. And so people miss out on that opportunity. And I know I've seen it myself when I've um, sat in on um, hearing aid clinics where people who could benefit are not even given the opportunity. In terms of smartphone ownership, this comes up all the time. Uh, the, a Deloitte study showed that 80% um, of over 55s um, um, were smartphone um, owners. Um, a study by Ipsos Mori showed that this figure was 90%. So we're seeing smartphones being used and being used for lots of different um, uh, different ways other than just being used as a phone. So this idea of experiential learning, this idea of being able to trial in there and learn how best to um, use the um, smartphone app really empowers people. And I think the message here, I think it's really probably the most important message of the whole 
uh, presentation is that smartphone hearing aids are not just for the tech savvy. We saw that people, when they were given the opportunity, even if they thought they weren't that um, techn technologically able, that they could get on with it and they got lots of benefit from um, their, their hearing aids by using the app. So there's a real role for audiologists here to support um, new hearing aid users, to help them agree their goals in terms of trialing how they use the uh, smartphone connected hearing aids and to self-monitor their use. And I think this idea that um, we really should be giving people an opportunity as default to go and have the hearing aid set up for uh, Bluetooth, smartphone tech, and um, so, so people are able to tr at least try the hearing aids and not make a judgment about them uh, be before they've even um, um, got the hearing aids. And then, of course, there are other ways of being able to um, um, inform and provide uh, patient education and improve knowledge with programmes such as CT Here Online that I developed a number of years ago and that is freely available on this website. Um, we've also got another version called m to hear um, which is uh, developed for mobile technologies and I'll be talking about these in a later uh, webinar. So uh, to conclude, smartphone connected hearing aids get good press, um, they're more cosmetically appealing, uh, we showed that they improve listening and participation and they resulted in less fatigue and less listening effort. Patients felt more empowered by using smartphone connected hearing aids and stigma was reduced. So um, in terms of benefits of M health, so these are the these are the benefits that, that we've seen, increased in access, empowerment, more person-centered approach, increased participation, um, uh, the ability to be able to for the user to control their, their hearing aids, um, better confidence and self-efficacy, um, self-management, and um, improvements in knowledge and skills. So well, I became quite interested in this idea of empowerment um, from a study that we, we published in 2019 and we started reading um, up on it. And we're now doing a study with a WSA Audiology with Sarah Gotovic and Karolina Smets with Paul and Shirty and Tegan Unit now to look to explore how empowerment in fact manifests itself for adults with hearing loss across the whole of the patient journey. And we're using um, some of the, um, using Zimmerman's um, model of empowerment and actually it's really interesting to see how um, the five key domains of the empower model um, really reflect a lot of what we had seen in the study I've just spoken about in a couple of our other remote technology studies. So this is user control, self-efficacy, participation, knowledge and skills, so we'll be asking about all of these um, in a series of interviews that we're carrying out in Denmark, Sweden and Australia over the coming months. Um, and one final uh, point about this, um, so this is the um, ICF framework, so we're very much moving away from participation, which is where a lot of the research I do sits, and moving looking um, looking at sort of personal factors, things around empowerment, and, and we're seeing this in some of our other outcomes um, work. So I'd like to go and thank my colleagues at Nottingham who um, helped run the study that I spoke about, which was funded um, by FONAC. Um, the audiological science department and the lead working with a number of colleagues on a number of different types of connected health studies that you'll be hearing about over the next um, coming weeks and finally here in australia who will be carrying out a number of different type of connected um, health studies mm -hmm.